Hi everyone. So 2018 Unit 2 Test Review. Are you ready? No secrets here. This question will be on the test. This question will be on the test. Given a derivative, so did you have to find the derivative yourself? No, it's just given to you. You need to be able to analyze the original function. Identify where it's increasing, decreasing, max or min. Here we go. You ready? Step one is that we need to find the critical numbers. So the critical numbers come from when the derivative is set equal to zero. Usually when you find the derivative yourself, you then have to factor to solve, but the derivative is already given to us in factored form. Do you see that? So what are our critical numbers? What will x equal? 3 and x equals what? Negative 1 like that. Then we're going to make the little chart. It used to be called a sign chart. Sign chart. Um, and let's see, I'm going to make it miniature over here. I put the negative 1 first because negative 1 is less than 3 and we, we're going from negative infinity really to positive infinity. Oof, calculus on a Monday morning. Here we go. Oh my gosh, I love showing you guys this. Okay, I have I have fun with this. You ready? We got to see if the derivative is positive or negative, and that will tell us if g is increasing or decreasing. So if we want to annotate the question right quick, g will be increasing if g prime is greater than 0 and g will be decreasing if g prime is less than zero. Every time I'm in those big meetings all about English and annotating and everyone teaches literacy, I always show them this example. I go, look, we annotate our questions in calculus too, okay? All right, back to the example. What's a number less than negative one? Negative two. Are you ready to really, 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 really pay attention? Here we go. Negative 2 minus 3 squared. Will that be positive or negative? Why? Why will it be positive? What will everything that's squared will come out what? Positive. So aren't all of these first terms going to come out positive? Positive, positive, positive. No matter what we put into that first factor, it's going to be positive, right? Okay, negative 2 plugged into the second factor, would that be positive or negative? Negative. So over here, when we plug in negative 2, we get a positive times a negative, which is what? Negative. You could put a little negative sign. I'm really tight on room, but what we really want to say is that the derivative is negative, right? The derivative is less than zero from negative infinity to negative one. Okay, what's the number between negative one and three? Zero. If we plug the zero in the first one, we square it, we get positive. Let's plug zero into the second factor. Zero plus one, positive. So we have a positive times a positive, which means the derivative is positive. What's a number greater than 3? 4. When you plug 4 in, we get a positive times a positive. And a positive times a positive is positive. Okay? We're going to use this little tiny chart to make our conclusions. Are you ready? Here we go. G is increasing. You can either write itty bitty or you can use lined paper. I just, I'm trying to save copies, so I'm scrunching all the questions up. G is increasing on, okay, um, we can say, this is a little debatable, but for increasing, we can say G is increasing from negative one to infinity 
because g prime is greater than zero. So from negative one to infinity, the derivative was positive. So we can say g is increasing. All right, where is g decreasing? This is our conclusion, right? g is decreasing from where to where? Negative infinity to negative one, and the reason always g prime is less than zero. Decreasing, slang, decreasing, the little apostrophe there. Um, where do we have a max or min? So let's see here, where do we pass from, this is negative, the derivative is going from negative to positive, negative to positive. So what's that going to be at negative one? A minimum. So g has a relative min at x equals negative one. Do you remember the reasoning? What do we write? But we can't say it. You may not use plus and minus signs, but I'm okay to say any G and POFs. I know that's, you might get mad about that, but whatever. Um, what was that, a minimum? Do we have a maximum anywhere? Does it ever go from positive to negative? No, so we're gonna say somewhere on your paper, no max, and the reason would be it never changes from positive to negative. All right, how do you like that question? So think about how long it would take if you had to find your own derivative, factor, solve, analyze. It's just a huge problem, right? So kind of a way for teachers or AP to shortcut it is we just give you the derivative, okay? All right, let's look at number two. These are the free response practice. Number two, use the graph of the function. Okay, are you ready? Be very, very careful because this is where your brain needs to be switching on the test. What did we analyze in the first question? We analyzed what? The derivative. What are we analyzing in this one? The original, okay? So what I like to do is I like to write whatever it is, the original or the derivative, I like to write it on the graph so I can keep my brain straight. Use the graph to identify the following. On what intervals is the derivative less than zero. So now we're using these definitions, but we're going backwards. So you tell me the derivative will be less than zero when h is doing what? What's the derivative mean? When you see derivative, what do you think? Slope of the tangent line. So when is the slope less than zero? Slope needs to be negative, which means the graph will be decreasing. On what intervals is h less than zero? Okay, so where is it decreasing? Let's see, negative infinity, it's increasing till you get to negative two, then negative two to zero. So h is decreasing, then we go increasing, and then decreasing, not at one, but at two to infinity, and the reason is h is decreasing. I thought it was redundant on every single line to write justify, 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 so I just wrote it at the top. Do you guys see that? Justify your reasoning and show your work for all the questions, okay? So we always have to have a reason. Okay, where is the, po where is the derivative positive? Derivative is positive when h is doing what? Increasing, so we have from negative infinity to negative two, and then from zero to two, and the reason is because h is increasing. At what values of x does the derivative change from positive to negative and then from negative to positive? So 
increasing means the derivative is positive, decreasing means the derivative is negative. So we're changing from positive to negative at what x value? Negative 2 also at 2, and then what's happening at 0? The derivative is changing from negative to positive. Okay, so let's write that out in two sentences. At x equals negative 2 and x equals 2, h prime of x changes from positive to negative. I don't think we need to justify that sentence. We just set it up here. h is increasing and then decreasing. So at x equals 0, h prime changes from. So what's happening to the derivative at 0? We're going from, yeah. So the original is going decreasing to increasing. So we say the derivative changes from negative to positive. Okay, we're going to do three separate videos, so this is going to be the end of the first video. Uh, two completely different questions, you just got to keep track. What are you analyzing and what are you, what's the question asking? So it won't just look at this and say, oh, there's a max at 2 and a max at negative 2 and a min at 0. That's pre-calculus. It's always going to give you one thing, but ask you questions about something else. Give you the derivative, ask you questions about the original or give you the original and ask you questions about the derivative. And that's where you need to use your memorization facts in your head to annotate the question and make the switch, okay?